If you're watching this video, you've probably seen the Cave Dweller before. If you haven't, this is a mob I designed back in August of last year. I wanted to make something that took an already creepy part of Minecraft, the cave noises, and turn them into an indicator for something terrifying lurking in the caves. But as people played with the mod, many issues with the original design came to my attention. And today, we will be going back over what made the Cave Dweller underwhelming and implementing many fixes and changes in hopes to make the Dweller's presence even more threatening and terrifying. Imagine you make a hardcore world. If you spent about 40 minutes in the world, you'd have at the very minimum all iron gear. At that point, could a cave really be a threat to you? Sure, a skeleton might knock you into lava, a creeper might sneak up behind you, but are you really that scared of anything? It's normal to be anxious walking into a potentially dangerous situation in a hardcore world, but besides maybe a warden, there's nothing so threatening in Minecraft that you would be actually afraid to go further into a cave. This is an idea that I heavily neglected when I first designed the Cave Dweller. I was focused too much on creepiness and atmosphere and I didn't create enough of a threat. And if the Cave Dweller isn't a threat, then the tension and creepiness it builds with the cave noises mean absolutely nothing, destroying the effectiveness of the original design. One way that we can make the Dweller more threatening is by using a technique that many horror games employ either by giving the player limited weapons to fight monsters with, limiting movement, or only providing clunky controls, most good horror games do an excellent job at taking away control from the player. Over the course of the video, we will try and find creative methods to take away control from the player, making encounters much more dangerous. Out of all the Cave Dweller's issues, there has been one major problem since release. While Minecraft is definitely a sandbox game, it still has RPG elements. As you slowly upgrade your weapons and armor, you get to a point where almost nothing can kill you. The game eventually turns into maintaining that armor and weaponry so that in the late game, nothing is really a threat to you while you work on your primary goals for the world. In vanilla Minecraft, this isn't a problem. At the end of the day, Minecraft is not an RPG and you're not supposed to be struggling fighting hordes of monsters that level up with you. But for the Cave Dweller, this is a bit of a problem. Something as simple as a shield and good timing can completely nullify the threat of the encounter. And eventually when you get the highest tier armor in the game, which is not too much of a struggle, our mob is completely harmless. Even just with mid armor, it's not that dangerous, making it pose almost no threat mid to late game. In this scenario, the player has far too much control for encounters to be anywhere close to stressful or terrifying. We will soon find a fix for this problem. As people have played with the Cave Dweller, there have been many different strategies found that completely nullify any amount of threat the mob poses. Why would you feel like you're in danger if you can do something as simple as place a boat or a bucket of water down to stop the Dweller? These strategies along with the scaling issue drive the tension down even further, and make dealing with the Cave Dweller less of a threat and more of a trivial task. Even looking past those strategies, there is an even bigger flaw in the Cave Dweller's design that is inherent to Minecraft's mechanics. Pillaring is a very simple maneuver that even someone with very little mechanical skill can pull off. You look down, jump, and hold right click. Something as simple as this maneuver shuts down most mobs in the game, including the Cave Dweller. These strategies end up giving the player far too much control over encounters which is a massive problem if we want the Dweller to feel anywhere close to scary. By the end of this video, we will try and make changes to break down as many of these strategies as we can. Although the Cave Dweller was designed around building creepiness with cave noises, it still feels like there's something missing from the buildup that would make the entire encounter more tense. The only thing that bridges the gap between the encounter and no threat at all is the extra cave noises, which are scary, but if we were to somehow add more events in between that slowly advance to the chase, it would do a better job of blending the stages together and creating a sense of rising tension that the mod is currently lacking. For this, we can take a look back at my first horror mod, Gargatron. Gargatron is an Xbot and Gmod that builds tension by raising the volume on a stalking sound as it gets closer and closer to you. Just the fact you know it is in the map and is stalking you is enough to feel thoroughly creeped out while you anticipate it finding you. This is something that I think the Cave Dweller is lacking. It doesn't come after you, instead sitting idly waiting for you to find it. With this new idea, as well as making the Cave Dweller more of a threat, we can make the space between the encounters even more tense. This is a graft version of a Cave Dweller encounter. Each step indicates a new event or behavior that occurs before being chased. The first step is nothing at all, no indication of the entity. The second step is adding the modded cave noises hinting that something might be around. And the third is when you spot the Cave Dweller. 
which has a chance of either starting a chase or resetting the cycle to build even more tension. If we want to make the space between the encounters even more tense, the first step will be adding a new event right here. The new step will be making the vanilla cave noises play even more often as the encounter gets closer. It's not as scary as the modded cave noises, but it does indicate that something is getting closer and it blends these two steps together. Next, I want there to be a bridge between the modded cave noises and spotting the dweller. For this, we will be adding an entirely new behavior. When the dweller spawns in, it will now slowly creep closer to the player until it's spotted. This creates a perfect blend between hearing the cave noises and the encounter, giving you that creepy feeling that something is actively searching for you and not just waiting to be found. The cave noises will also completely stop and be replaced by a stalking noise for even more atmosphere. But for when the Dweller is spotted, we're going to change some things. Currently when you look at the Dweller, there's a chance that it flees, chases, or stares. But we'll be adding a new behavior called Active Stalk to this list. There's now going to be a chance that it will continue to slowly creep towards you for a set amount of time. And when that time runs out, it will flip a coin to either flee or start coming after you. This makes the mob feel even more lifelike and unpredictable than it was before. But does any of this buildup matter if the Cave Dweller isn't even a threat? The next thing we want to do is fix the most glaring issue in the mod, by balancing the Dweller's stats to make sure it fits Minecraft's power scaling. One way we can make the Dweller threatening yet survivable throughout every stage of the game is by making its damage armor-piercing. That way, no matter how far you are into the game, leather armor or enchanted netherite armor, the Dweller will remain a persistent threat in caves, but it won't be doing an absurd amount of damage in the early game. Ignoring armor helps ride that line between survivable and threatening, and makes the player feel like there's no way to truly prepare for one of the encounters. In the same vein, another thing that completely nullifies the threat of the Dweller is the shield. Luckily, the solution for this one is simple. The shield will instantly break if the Dweller hits it. It now also runs slightly faster than before, tanks a bit more damage, and knocks you back farther, creating even more pressure during encounters, and forcing you to think harder about how to escape. After that, in order to make the Dweller even more of a threat, we need to update its movement in a way that shuts down the many strategies that can stump its pathing. Firstly, the Dweller no longer automatically enters boats or minecarts, making sure that you can't instantly shut it down by carrying one around. Secondly, it has a constant depth strider effect, which allows it to walk through water just as fast as walking on land. That way, a water bucket is no longer an effective countermeasure. And on top of this, we can add the most important movement change. The Dweller will now climb up a wall if it can get to a player faster that way. However, we need to make sure the Dweller's climb is different than something like the Spider's climb. The Spider is much too easy to knock off while it's climbing, so we need to make sure we disable knockback while it's climbing up. And to prevent it from being blocked as it's climbing, it will move around any blocks that you place to try and stop it, adding to that inescapable feeling we were initially trying to create with the one by one crawl. After that we need to play a sound for the climbing, and also add a stalking sound for when the dweller slowly gets closer to you, making the stalking phase feel even more unnerving. I've decided to make the stalking noise play in a random location so that you're always aware of the dweller getting closer, but never sure of its location. Putting all of this together, we have what I believe is an even creepier version of the original Dweller, and I think it's best if I just show you how it works in-game. The updated version of the mod will be available soon on CurseForge. There's a link to where it'll eventually be up in the description, so make sure to check it out if you're interested. If you enjoyed this video and want to support me, you can go to my Patreon in the description to give $2 a month and show up in the credits of these videos. Thank you all for your support, and I will see you in the next video.